Let's take a look now at a partial fraction question where we have a quadratic factor. As we work through this, we want to keep in mind that up to this point, we've dealt only with linear factors. And when we had a linear factor like x minus 1, we used a in the numerator, which is a constant. So my denominator had a degree of 1, my numerator had a degree of 0, x to the 0 power. If we now end up with a factor that is quadratic, meaning something like x squared plus 1, x squared plus 1 will not be factored into two separate um, factors of degree 1. I have to keep it as x squared plus 1, which means my numerator has to be 1 degree less than 2, which is a degree of 1. So now I'm going to put ax plus b in my numerator which is going to obviously make things a bit more complicated. So let's take a look at how that's going to affect our question. I'll start with 16x to the fourth minus one, and I need to factor that. So if I remember my difference of perfect squares pattern, I can rewrite this as 4x squared plus one, 4x squared minus one. 4x squared plus one will not be reduced. But 4x squared minus 1 is still a difference of perfect squares pattern, so that's going to reduce to 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1, and then I've got my quadratic factor, 4x squared plus 1. So that's what I'm going to be using. This guy obviously is going to use this quadratic factor, and these two are both linear factors. So what I'm going to do now is rewrite this as x over... 16x to the fourth minus 1 is equal to a over 2x plus 1 plus b over 2x minus 1 plus cx plus d over x, uh, 4x squared plus 1. When I take everything multiplied by that denominator, I end up with x equals, a would be the 2x plus 1 would cancel, giving me 2x minus 1 and 4x squared plus 1. b would have the 2x minus 1 cancel, but I would still have 2x plus 1 and 4x squared plus 1. And C would have the quadratic, or sorry, CX plus D would have 4X squared plus 1 cancel, but I would still have 2X plus 1 and 2X minus 1. So now we have to go about solving for A, B, C, and D. So we have four of them this time. So I will start by letting A, I'm sorry, letting X equal 1 half. So if x is equal to 1 half, then I know that 2x minus 1 would be 2 times 1 half, or 1 minus 1, which is 0. So I'm not going to have an a value, and I'm not going to have a c or a d value, because 2x minus 1 would still be 0. So I'm going to end up with x, which is 1 half, is equal to 0a, b would be 2x, so 2 times 1 half is 1, plus 1 is 2, and 4, that should be an x squared, 4 times 1 half squared, 1 half squared would be 1 fourth, times 4 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so I end up with 1 half is equal to 4b, and therefore b by division is equal to 1 eighth. I'm also going to let x equal negative 1 half. And that is going to allow the 2x plus 1s to become zeros. So 2x plus 1 will be 0, and 2x plus 1 will be 0, which means negative 1 half is going to be equal to a times 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1, minus 1 is negative 2. 4 times negative 1 half squared would be positive 1 fourth times 4, or 1 plus 1, which is 2. 
negative 1 half is then equal to negative 4a, which means a is equal to positive 1 eighth. So far so good, I have a and b. Now this is going to get a little bit tricky because I've got both c and d to solve for. But because I was smart enough to do these two first, I already know an a value and a b value. So I'm going to let x equal 0. And the reason I'm going to do that is then it's going to get rid of the c value and I can just focus on d. So if I let x equal 0, I get 0 equals. I'm going to replace a with 1 eighth because I already know a. 2 times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And 4 times 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is positive 1. And for b, I'm going to replace b with positive 1 eighth as well. And then 2x plus 1 is 0 plus 1. And 4 times 0 squared is 0 plus 1 is 1. And then c times 0 is 0, so I get 0 plus d or just d, which is what I wanted. And then 0 times 2 is 0 plus 1. So that's positive 1. And then 2 times 0 is 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So I have 0 on the left-hand side. I have negative 1 eighth. I have positive 1 eighth. And I have, oops, minus d, negative d. Now, negative 1 eighth and positive 1 eighth eighth cancel out, so I have 0 equals negative d, or d equals 0. So that just leaves me with one more, and again, you can choose any value that you want for that. I'm going to choose x equals 1, and whenever we get to those end ones, remember we're going to have to do just a lot of substituting of all of the values that we already um, know. So again, I have 1 on the left side, I've got 1 eighth for a, and then 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. And 4 times 1 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. And then for b, I have positive 1 eighth. And I have 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3. And then 4 times 1 squared, which is 4, plus 1, which is 5. And then c times 1 which is c, plus d, which is 0. So I'm just going to leave it as c, 1c plus 0. And then 1 would be 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3, and 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 1, which is 1. So on the left side, I have 1. I have 5 eighths. I have 15 eighths. And I have three C's. I'm going to rewrite one as eight eighths so that it's easier to combine. So five plus 15 is 20 eighths. If I subtract 20 eighths from each side, eight minus 20 is negative 12 eighths is equal to three C. If I divide each side by three, I get C is equal to negative 12 twenty fourths which means I get negative one half. So now I have all of my values and I'm going to rewrite those on the next page, keeping in mind that when I write something like one eighth, instead of writing one eighth as my numerator, I'm going to write it as one and then eight. I don't know why that switched to a different color that you can't see. One and then 8. So that's how I'm going to write it when we get to the next page. So I've essentially now just rewritten exactly what I had on my last slide, but I replaced a with 1 eighth and b with 1 eighth and c with negative 1 half and d with 0. So that's where the negative came from and that's why you don't see a d value in the numerator. So of course, if I were actually going to do this, I would take it one step further and keep the eight, one eighth on the outside and then have two X plus one DX 
I would take the 1 8 on the outside and have 1 over 2x minus 1 dx, and I would keep the 1 half on the outside and then have x over 4x squared plus 1. So from here, I just need to integrate each part separately. So let's just look at one part at a time and go from there. A little color coding never hurt anybody. So for my first one, I have 1 over 2x plus 1. Now I can use uh, the logarithm rule or natural logarithm rule that says take the natural log of 2x plus 1. But remember, if I'm taking the natural log of u, I need to make sure that u prime was in that question somewhere. So if we let u equal 2x plus 1, then u prime is 2 dx. So I need a 2 here, and if I put a 2 inside, I need a 1 half on the outside. So I have 1 16th times the natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus 1. The same is going to hold true here. If u is 2x minus 1, then u prime is 2 dx. So again, I need a 2 here, but that means I need a 1 half on the outside. So that gives me 1 16th natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 1. And then for my last one, I'm just going to use u substitution. u is going to be 4x squared plus 1. So u prime is going to be 8x dx. So again, I need an 8x, not just x, but 8x. So I'm going to need 1 8th on the outside. So that's going to give me minus, because I had minus to begin with, 1 16th. And then remember, all of this is now the integral of u to the negative, I'm sorry, u to the negative 1. So it's just still going to be a natural log again. Sorry, I was getting confused. So natural log of the absolute value of 4x squared plus 1. And then, of course, plus c. Now, that's sort of a good answer, but instead, I'm going to simplify a little bit more. So I can see that everything has a 1 16th. I can take out the 1 16th, and that leaves me with basically everything that's left. Using the properties of logarithms, I know if there is a plus in between, that means I'm going to find the product. So my numerator is going to be, I'm just going to make that an absolute value instead, 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And I know if I have subtraction, that tells me to make that a denominator. So my denominator is 4x squared plus 1 plus c. So of course, my very last step is just going to be to clean up that numerator just a little bit. And that's going to give me 1 16th. Oops, I forgot natural log here, guys. Sorry. 1 16th times the natural log of the absolute value. And if I multiply the values in the numerator, I get 4x squared. And then I get plus 2x and minus 2x, and those cancel. So then minus 1. My denominator is 4x squared plus 1. And then plus c. So this is my final answer. Obviously, we only went through one example, but it took us quite a long time, and that's why I'm only going to do one example. You would still follow the same steps for any other examples like that, so I feel I've given you enough knowledge to be able to do any of those questions. Up next, we're going to take a look at section 8.6 over numerical integration. We'll start by using the trapezoidal rule to approximate integrals.